Hello everyone, welcome back. First, let me apologize for the lack of videos lately. Like Max Egan over at the Crow House channel, I have been having computer troubles as well. Max believes his computer troubles may have stemmed from uh, hackers, perhaps, um, and he does discuss a lot of controversial subject matter on his channel, so I wouldn't rule that out. But in my case, I think I just wore out my poor little hard drive, compiling photos, making videos, uh, I, I know it got pretty hot saving and rendering and uploading to YouTube, so maybe I cooked it, but no big deal. I didn't lose too too many files, and um, you know I have the Google Plus al album for a reason. That's why that exists, is so we can save our progress and uh, keep everything compiled despite you know personal computer problems. But now I have a new laptop that's much more powerful and has a better graphics card, and I got a nice old style keyboard so I can type a little bit better and comment to you guys a little bit more efficiently uh, feels a lot better uh, let me know what you guys think of the audio um, I'm still using my same microphone but I believe the audio card the sound card in my laptop should be a little bit better also so maybe there'll be a little bit of a difference uh, I know before the fan from the old laptop CPU was spinning really hard in the background so you probably could have heard that so maybe now everything's a little bit quieter in the background maybe you can hear me a little bit clearer so what you see is all that remains of the bevel block research in my ancient history criticisms folder uh, what I've done is I went back and I've taken all my finished episodes and I've backed them up onto my hard drive so I've saved them regardless of what YouTube wants to do with them and uh, I've just kind of kept on going where I left off with other sites. The sites that we were talking about in the last few episodes, I have uploaded to the Google Plus album. So they're there for you guys to look at some of the better photos I found and some of my comments on the photos. And I've been looking at some other sites that we have not put on the list yet. There's definitely something to the Crusader Fort Castle thing. There's lots. And really similar architecture so I need to look at those and we might even do a separate series or at least a separate video uh, compiling all the best research and investigation that I find at the sites and maybe after looking at them all I can make some kind of case for uh, connection in the builders or at least in the construction techniques right the the encoded knowledge in the structures uh, taking it any farther than that I might have to have some more compelling evidence so we're going to keep an open mind and keep a close scrutiny to these sites, but um, I'm, I'm, I'm very interested in these right now. These have completely turned my attention. For example, this wall at Baalbek, this is from the lah.ru video on Baalbek that's in my playlist tab. He points out this wall and these square holes in it. Now look at these square holes. What would you attribute these to in this wall and their orientations? Like where they're at. I, mean, I know this might be a reconstructed wall. He, I think he proposes that just based on the haphazard nature of it. I'm either way on it. It could be original. It could be rebuilt. But focusing on the little square holes, what is that about? Why are they like that? And then here in Israel, Jordan Valley, the remains of the 12th century crusader fortress of Belvoir. I haven't uploaded this yet, but... I want to show you guys the corner of this wall. Now first you see these little pock marks in it. You think they're just holes, but you zoom in real close and they are square. Some of them are square. And I'm not sure, I'm not going to say all of them are square, but some of these, they are definitely little square holes and they're really random, uh, anomalous. I don't really know what to think about those, but I see those in other places and I'm I'm going to need to focus on those more and try to point these out because they get really small. And if those are all square, if all these little tiny holes, all these little pitted surfaces are square, what does that imply? Does that imply some kind of processing technology? I have no idea. But we'll save that for another time when we can uh, examine that and go through some of those examples more thoroughly. But today I want to show you guys this forgotten temple in the middle of the Egyptian desert uh, in the Fayum region called Qasr el-Sagha 
and this is a very interesting little temple and I didn't know how to classify it and these these are literally the best photos I could find scouring Google for a while and before I show you the pictures I want to show you a couple articles that I'm going to give you links to in the description first of all if you try to YouTube if you do a YouTube search for this site there's not much there's a couple Russian short videos that's interesting uh, but most of them are Jeep videos but I'll link you to the top three articles on this site that I found just the Google search for this Kasser El Sagha temple the top three they all pretty much say the same thing and these two have a little bit better pictures but basically they all say situated five miles north of Lake Kauron uh, on a low outcrop at the foot of Jebel Katrani, Mount Katrani, in a deserted and inhospitable area, is a small and uninscribed temple known locally as Kasser el Sagha, thought to be dedicated to Sobek the Crocodile God. That's interesting to me. But they, you can read through these articles. They all pretty much say the same thing. The inside is more carved and finely decorated or executed then the exterior the exterior is very plain it's polygonal dry laid stones of pretty big size but it is essentially just one long room with two entrances and little niches or little alcoves and then a small little room at one end and then i believe the other one is a blind room there's no entrance to it it's just a space and they do say the whole area is filled with evidence of substantial ancient occupation on the flat plain to the south of Kasser el Shaka. There are several sites of prehistoric villages. Those inhabitants seem to have existed by hunting and farming and fishing. It doesn't really say a time, but you know, I'm, I'm assuming Neolithic. I mean, who knows? What, what do they find? Arrowheads and spear points, uh, bifacial stone points. I don't know. But you guys can research further and I'll probably try to do this as well but I want to show you these are the best pictures I could find on Google the highest quality and the site has some anomalies to it that no one's pointed out and first of all this is like a little roof section part of it is open to the air but part of it the little niche the niches uh, alcoves have these coverings these are polygonal or trapezoidal you could say you see how it goes around the corner here you know that's indicative of other sites in Egypt here is the back side of the structure and look at that I, I find this piece really interesting right this one big piece and then all these huge stones around it. these are pretty big right uh, we, we could call these megaliths and you see by the lighting you see all the little nubs and knobs on these stones so right here we have one of of only two other sites that I know of in Egypt that have blocks with nubs on them. Now that's the Menkare Pyramid casing stones and the Kiosk of Trajan. And those, those are the only two sites that I've seen that have nubs and knobs on them in Egypt. Very rare occurrence. Maybe there's more, but they've been knocked off and the, the walls have been cleaned up. The same with the square holes. Maybe they've been filled in, but I see them here as well. And we'll see more of them in other pictures. But you can see the scope of this construction you can see parts of it are finely dressed but in the lower areas very roughly hewn and full of knobs and nubs and other processing marks and strange things in the front this is a really good picture this shows some of the few nubs on the front here one at the very end there maybe there were more but the three here that's interesting what are those about and the doorways are interesting to me there's one large very nice one and very, one very small crude one that's interesting and look at the scale of these blocks above the you know the lintel and the ones on either side of the lintel and this trapezoidal block here that's very interesting and all the polygonal blocks very interesting and is this an another l-shaped block like we saw in that pyramid in greece that's very interesting interesting perhaps connected construction style you know that's a very uh difficult block to make and you have to make that single block on purpose for a specific spot 
same with all these other ones but that's just that's a, that's a you know why a, a, a l-shaped block i don't know here's a good photo of the interior now no in, no inscriptions no figurative carvings the only decoration are these little coping pieces and the fluting or flaring at the top here that's kind of a traditional uh egyptian motif like i was talking about in the uh huanaco pampa site in south america in peru i believe it was they have the same curving header piece this cornice that juts out architectural and artistic you can see the scale here of this lintel a lot of the blocks here were erected uh you know impossibly they, it, it seems like it was done difficult on purpose now, they made it as hard as they could but that, i guess that's why the structure is still standing it's a testament to the design of the structure but it's very strange that for the most part it's all very smooth and plain and yet this one area on the interior is the only area that has any kind of decoration on the surface and maybe in the insets there are grooves perhaps implying doors that closed perhaps i don't know that's interesting and here's a cool older photo a little stretched out but it'll show you the remnants of other elements laying around maybe some of these were parts of the ceiling and other parts of the walls so perhaps it was a completely covered structure it's giving me a lot of uh, deja vu to the dragon house of ochi that we saw the greek the greek site that was kind of just uh, constructed out of the bedrock from behind it was very crude on the outside but a little more sophisticated on the inside a uh, simple rectangular structure like this uh, built seems to be hard on purpose difficult on purpose so just getting uh, the vibe of the dragon house of ochi when i look at this site another side view uh, you can see the part that's covered i assume is this part the little alcoves and then this is the part open to the air but perhaps it was covered a long time ago and there was more to this upper structure who knows the, you know it has been cleaned up in some of the photos but like i said those older photos show a lot of uh, worked stones laying around the site and even in some of these newer photos there still are some pieces and here just another angle uh, different lighting but you can see the nubs they're kind of reminiscent of Oyante Tambo and Machu Picchu and other places in South America. At least I think so. Uh, kind of eerily, eerily familiar to me. Eerily similar. And then I found some close-up photos that really blew me away. I really don't know what to think about some of these stones, guys. Now, look at the square holes at the corners. Here and here. That is definitely like some of the other sites we've been discussing eerily familiar now you can see there's damage here this is this block has cracked and this part has started to fall away but what is going on here and then over here what is that damage now over here i could say you could say that that is mortar and that this is an attempt to repair it and to keep the structure together but then it has this crazy uh, erosion or whatever damage this is into the stone that's very strange uh, I think that some other sites in South America exhibit the same kind of erosion. Uh, I think some people have proposed it's uh, electrical, maybe. I don't know. Who knows what that kind of stuff is. But it definitely does look, uh, it appears melted or at least, you know, heavily. It has experienced a cataclysm of some kind. Now, you look at the, the seam of the stones here. Very interesting. It's smooth at the surface and around the edge. And then it gets rough just very interesting processing and surface treatments if i zoom in any farther it starts to get pixelated but you can you can see there is just a different surface treatment here versus here and even up here i want to say it's smooth around the edge and a little more pitted and pockmarked in the central region of the stone um, and just the damage again what is this and over here is this an attempt to repair with mortar that's all I can assume. And here, another angle again, just different lighting. So you can see that 
In this instance, you can't really even see the nubs, so it takes the certain lighting to be able to see the nubs. And the flanking stones look pretty worked here. They have interesting marks on them. I can't really zoom in too much. The quality will break down, but you can see there's, I'm going to say that's a saw mark or some kind of processing mark. And you see these pits in it. I'm not sure those could be square pits and square holes. I can't say that for sure, but we'll look at some other photos and maybe we'll say that. Here, for example, this is just uh, someone has taken a step back into the alcove so you can see the length of the hallway. It is interesting. There's a little shelf here, but and of course you can see the upper uh, architectural artistic stuff a little better. We'll zoom in here. This is a pretty good photo, but all this little damage peppered throughout the structure is this projectile fire is this uh, I don't really know erosion it looks some of them look pretty square so I don't know they could be little tiny square holes peppered throughout I do see them at a lot of entrance ways to a lot of sites on a lot of large flanking stones and you can see how this you could technically call this a bevel block here how it has this edge to it and I don't know, the spaces in between, sometimes it looks like mortar. Other times it looks just like where two stones were almost fused together. However, that sounds to you guys, I don't know. We can zoom in a little bit more here. Yeah, it does start to break down. But you can see it's just a very simple execution for the top. This little flared coping cornice piece and like a raised half round edge on each of the pillars and running along the length. Now this is an amazing photo. First of all, it shows that this little temple is in the proximity of this, we're gonna call this a geological feature. This is known as the Qasr el Sagha formation. So the temple, the name, I don't know which, the attrib which att attribution came first or who was the original here, but so first of all let's look at the rubble in the foreground there is lots of anomalous holes in these blocks there's one in the structure itself a little round one i believe but in the foreground look at all these square ones especially over here on the right hand side we'll zoom in the quality is pretty good here so what is all this about on this right hand side is this erosion on the blocks I don't think so I think this is some kind of processing evidence I really I don't know other holes and things very curious stuff and I believe this might even be a column drum segment looks machined and other very nicely cornered stones very interesting stuff just laying around this temple. So the temple itself isn't the whole story. And I would recommend you guys check out Praveen Mohan's recent video on Sigiriya. It's the large formation, mountainous formation, that has carvings and plateaus in the top of it. But he also focuses on some outlying boulders and other geological features that also exhibit a lot of these square holes peppered throughout the blocks or throughout the boulders. Um, what this implies, I don't know. He pro offers his proposal. You guys can check it out and tell me what you think of that. I think it's pretty interesting. I, I really have no idea, guys. This stuff is so wild and why it would be executed in the way it is. I just, I don't know. But very fascinating stuff, and I'll give you all the link to his video in the description. And finally, guys, let's look at this picture. This is uh, one of the only ones like this that I could find. It's very detailed, very close up, and it shows some very interesting evidence of something. I don't even know what we're implying at this point. Was this mortar? Was this erosion? What happened to these blocks to make them look like this? These voids, these spaces, these indentations. Let's zoom in a little bit pretty good photo these indentations in the top and the voids in the stones it's very strange to me 
Some of them have hard edges. Some of it just looks very eroded or almost like it was mortar. But we know that these structures are mostly dry laid and in all the other areas of this structure it is dry laid. So is this repair mortar? Or is this jam damage to the stone somehow? I don't know. It's very wild. But you guys, check this site out for yourself. Tell me what you think. It's an unknown, forgotten little temple out in the middle of the desert. But it exhibits a lot of the hallmarks that we are looking for. So this little temple has a story to tell. And we just need to dig a little bit deeper and see what we can find. So thank you guys again for hanging out with me. And we will talk to you next time.